As the 15th of 17 children, I may not be the most obvious poster child for ask and you shall receive. I could have expected life of hand-me-down adventures and second-hand dreams to go along with my older siblings, clothes, and toys. But I never expected anything less than a miracle. My whole life has shown me that ask and you shall receive is true. While the details of my life may appear to be different than most, what you will come to understand by the end of this video is that we're all here on this earth for a reason and for a word. The reason is to serve and the word love. As you will learn to see in your life as I have seen in my own, it is the infinite abundance of love that flows through every thought we have as it expresses itself in every person we meet and infuses within each experience we have. And so it is that we are all messengers of love. The Infinite Power of Love to recognize the infinite power of love that is embedded in all of us, we must remember to get out of the way of love by accepting we are all worthy of it. It's not just a matter of asking for love or any of its unlimited abundance. It's allowing ourselves the space to be worthy of what it is we are asking for. Within our heart, it is ever-expanding space by which we can fill up with love. But this space can be misunderstood when we forget the limitlessness of our own creative power to call upon God and the angels and bring forth an abundance of miracles in our lives and the lives of our family and friends. If we do not make room for what we ask for, we are blocking with the abundance of gifts that is part of our divine inheritance. As I mentioned earlier, I have never expected anything less than a miracle in my life. There may have been some moments of doubt, but those moments were so brief that I never allowed myself to spend much time in that space, except to know it's not worthy of me or anyone. And so my whole life has shown me that it is so very true that what you ask for, you shall receive. With that in mind, what I am going to share with you in this video is not only a brief snapshot of my life, but you will learn that whatever you ask for, you shall receive because, like all of us, you are a messenger of love. My Prince, when I was a little girl, I love the movie Cinderella. My big dream was always my prince, my husband. I left home at 13 and moved in with my brother and his wife. I was happy there. But when I met Ed a little while later, I knew that he was my prince and my real home was with him. Ed was 17, sweet, strong, and handsome and my heart did little flips every time I saw him. I remember walking by his house and saying to myself, I'm gonna marry that guy someday. We became high school sweethearts. Dating at such a young age was quite an experience. With me not even knowing how to drive, but we were very happy, just going for a walk, holding hands, or going to our favorite ice cream parlor, the Purple Cow. On weekends, we'd hike at the national parks or had fun roller skating. Going to the movies was special. Love Story was one of our all-time favorites. Three years later, after we started dating, my brother, sister, Ed and I were on our way to my nephew's funeral when our car was hit from the side, throwing the four of us into a tree. We were rushed to the emergency room where my sister and I were admitted for our injuries. As Ed nervously paced the waiting room, he overheard an emergency room doctor informing a nurse that the two girls in the car wreck had died. 
Sure that my sister and I had passed away, Ed panicked and stormed into my room. What Ed did not know is that there had been another accident before ours. Overcome with emotion from seeing me alive and well, my beloved Ed dropped to one knee and cried, Dixie, I thought I lost you. I never, ever want to lose you. Will you marry me? I burst into tears in my hospital bed. Yes, I said, grasping my prince's hand. Yes, I've always known I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. Dixie's Dream When Ed and I officially got married, I was only a junior in high school. Not many would think that being married so young would work, but we knew how strong our love was, and we listened to our hearts. All this time, ever since I've asked for my first big dream of love, I had Ed's support. He never shied away from supporting me, even in the most unthinkable of ways. For example, the car that we were in in that crash was Ed's. On the back, he had taken to painting the words, Dixie's Dream. I laughed at the idea of Ed putting that on there, but I also felt so incredibly loved and supported that he would honor me in such a way. And as he did, he was also honoring himself. For how can anyone share that much love without being open to receive an abundance of love in return? This is a key to asking for what you want and being fully open to receiving it. A key piece to this is not allowing the details of how you think your dreams must unfold to get in the way of how they are designed to unfold in the most beautiful and in the most unexpected of ways. How are Ed and I to know that the car he named Dixie's Dream would one day be involved in a car crash, that we would be the catalyst for accelerating our lives and bringing forth a dream come true for both of us in ways neither Ed nor I could never have imagined. And that's the thing about dreams. We can imagine the window dressing of what we think they will look like, feel like, and sound like. And we can even stamp our idea of a timeable on when, where, and how our dreams will arrive in our lives. But no matter how adept we are at visualizing our dreams, the truth is, we have no idea how our dreams will unfold. All that is required is that we ask and open our heart, know that we deserve them, and then get out of our way for those dreams to manifest into our lives. Let me have at it. Ed's unconditional love and unfailing support gave me faith, strength, and confidence to keep on asking for what I need and want and to go for my dreams. From our marriage to our expansion of our family with our beautiful children and grandchildren, there was never a moment that I didn't feel Ed's love And in turn, there wasn't a moment that I didn't feel God's love in my life. Years later, after my kids were all grown up, I wanted nothing more than to start my own business. I heard about a conference for women in business put on by the eWomen Network that was taking place in Dallas. I felt so strongly drawn to this that I made the 1,800-mile drive with two friends. I want this to mark a new chapter in my life. I thought as we sped down the highway, not knowing that pink would change my life forever, I showed up fresh as a daisy in Dallas, all dressed in, you guessed it, pink. I immediately felt my whole body buzz with inspiration. It was true, wasn't it? It happened to me before, when I fell in love with my prince. So why not with a business? Okay, I said, let me at it. The inspiration to give back. That day at the conference for women in business forever changed my life. For once again, I was reminded of the infinite power of ask and you shall receive. I may have asked for the inspiration and guidance for starting a new business, but knew I could not embark this new chapter alone, nor did I want to. I made the most of the opportunities that were given to me at the conference. Not only did I seek out guidance and inspiration from others that would be necessary to bring my dreams to life, but I made sure to keep my heart and mind open to collaborations, 
All of this was done without limiting myself to thinking I even knew what I needed then or in the future. By remaining open, I made connections with tons of awesome women, all ready to support me in my new business. Everywhere I went, I asked for help and information and received more than I can ever imagine. My new mentors and collaborators were right there for me, right away. I knew that a big reason I wanted to succeed was so I can give back. This became as much a part of what inspired me as anything I did with my new business. It's one thing to ask for your dreams to come true and receive the blessings that they will bring. But the one piece of this timeless process, ask and you shall receive, which many overlook, is that in order for us to truly live our dreams, we must be ready to give back and share our dreams with others through love and gratitude. For it is here that we truly fulfill our roles as a messenger of love. Falling in love with your purpose. When I got home from the business conference, I started dreaming up and developing products. One morning, I woke up and thought, tickled pink chocolate. Nobody out there has thought of a pink chocolate bar called tickled pink. I hopped on the computer and educated myself about what it takes to own a product. I taught myself about trademarks, labeling, and manufacturing. People would say, I never made pink chocolates, but I guess I can try. Ideas for products, community events, even a jingle rushed in, as if they've only been waiting for me to ask them to show up. I was having a blast, falling in love again, this time with my own purpose in life. Getting all that confidence and strength from other women and at home, from Ed and our family and friends, Tickle Pink Boutique exploded beyond anything I could have ever imagined when I dreamed of owning my own business and put this dream out to the universe. Since that conference in Dallas, I have fallen madly in love with connecting people who can help each other. It is such a natural way for women to succeed in business. I see myself now as a connector more than just a creator or entrepreneur. This is a part of giving ourselves the permission to accept what it means to be a messenger of love. For what is love but a series of connections that are forever expanding? And isn't that what we're all here to do for one another? Just like with my business and even with the books that I am now writing, I didn't know I can really do it all at first. In the case of the business, I did it locally, getting involved in all the community organizations. Before I knew it, my business went national and eventually even international. As things picked up, I found myself traveling eight times a year to go to networking groups and share knowledge and inspiration with other women. I had the honor of meeting all kinds of inspiring people. A year later, I was going back to eWomen Network in Dallas. And this time, I was nominated for an award, International Business Matchmaker. Ed had just dropped me off with my friends to travel to the airport to fly to Dallas. Without my knowing, Ed was traveling to eWomen Network to Dallas, doing what I sought to do last year, driving 1,800 miles. He knew something I didn't know. Sitting in the front row, waiting for all the names to be called for who's the winner for the International Business Matchmaker. By surprise, I heard my name, Dixie Daly. As I received this award on stage, I heard our family whistle. We had a family whistle that I knew. When I hear that, Ed is there. As he did the family whistle, my heart just puttered and was so excited. I'm like, Ed's here. I knew it. He was up on stage with a bouquet of roses. See, he knew I was getting the award, but I didn't. All my friends were so thrilled and excited, and Ed got so many hugs that day. Really, everybody wanted an Ed. You see, my prince, he even expanded love for miles just to make me happy. Your dream is speaking. Are you listening?
Supporting each other is the key to breathing life into your dreams as it is for expanding life itself. When I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, who needs me today? Who can I support today? When my friend became sick without insurance, we did a fundraiser for her that ended up connecting me with someone to help market my chocolates. I had no intention of even looking for that, but my helping her helped us both. When I needed financing, I talked to a woman in one of my networking groups. You know I'll help you, she said, and then added with a smile. All you had to do was ask. Women have an easy time giving, but not the easiest time asking or receiving. Ask and you will receive. If you don't ask, who do you have to blame but yourself? But in asking, you must be prepared to listen for the answer. When you listen to your dreams, this is where you will learn the power of giving. By listening, you are able to hear what your dreams are saying to you. Your dreams are always helping you to further tap into the limitlessness of your heart, which is where you will find the power of gratitude and in the giving and receiving. And really, all there is to receiving is saying two little words, thank you, except that receiving is just as powerful as giving. Either way, you are enjoying life and giving joy to people around you. The Gift of Ownership If you want to know one of the most overlooked pieces to having all your heart desires and truly stepping into the roles as messengers of love, it is taking responsibility for your choices. They are yours to own. The thing about giving back and sharing our dreams to inspire and help others is that we must own what it is we give away. Once I put something out to the universe, I own it. I have no doubt about that. I feel what I want to do next, and it happens. The process and the experience is truly amazing. That gift is out there for you, too. Be clear about what you want. Know the what. You don't have to figure out the how and the why. If you're clear about the what, the how and the why will happen for you. The what is your foundation. Sometimes you need to shift gears and ask again, what is my what? That's a good thing. Your what revolves right along with you. Wherever I go, I put out to the universe what I want and that I am ready to receive. And without fail, someone always comes to me. Arms stretch open wide saying, I will help you. I asked for a distributor for my company's products and I got one. I asked for a great marketing connection, and I ran into two Sell on TV guys the very next day. When it came time to write my books, Angelic Dreams, I asked for a way to publish them, and I was shown. I also asked for help in getting the word out for how the books could be found in the vast space of the internet, and once again, I was sent the angels who would help me get the books more recognition. When you ask for what you want and need, everything will flow naturally from it. You don't have to struggle when you surrender the need to control the uncontrollable. And love cannot be controlled. So when you allow yourself to accept the certainty in love's gifts, what can possibly get in the way of you receiving them? The Gift of Eternal Love When you marry your high school sweetheart, and your four children go on to marry their high school sweethearts, and you have a pet born on Valentine's Day, and... You live in the sweetheart town of Loveland, Colorado? Is it any wonder that one day your heart will realize you are a messenger of love? Back in Dallas, when I attended the eWomen Network event, I saw a breakout session titled The Passion Test. I knew I had to attend that class. During the class, the audience was asked to write down 10 things they were passionate about. And then... We were supposed to narrow our list down to one great passion. The one thing I just couldn't cross off my list was to be a messenger. The session leader asked, to be a messenger? For whom? For what? I didn't really know, but I spoke the first words that came to me like a message. To be a messenger for God, whatever he wants me to be. I already felt like a messenger. But it was a realization of what is truly meant to be a messenger of God that would enhance my gift for accepting my role as a messenger of love. 
by making connections between people and helping everyone whose path I crossed to find the support they needed, I faithfully served that passion of being a messenger that I wrote down at the conference. I felt so blessed in all the new friends in my life, but new lessons about my purpose were still to come, and in a way I never planned for. Why am I left here? As my life business and purpose seem unstoppable, God took the man I was in love with, my whole life to heaven. My beloved Ed was no longer physically with me. I don't know how much people believe in the idea that you came here for a reason, and when your purpose is fulfilled, you go to heaven. I do. What other explanation can there be for someone like Ed suddenly passing without an illness? I took some comfort knowing that one big reason Ed was here was to take care of me. He would have done anything for me. He certainly fulfilled that purpose and many others. He had a big kind heart and helped and supported anyone that came into his path. A few days after his passing, a book titled Messages of Hope arrived at my door. In my state of sadness and shock, it took me weeks to open that book. One day I finally did, and its message that came to me changed my life. Spirit wants to connect with us as much as we want to connect with it. I had always been deeply spiritual, but I hadn't really known about spirit. I was so devastated by Ed's death that I hadn't opened my heart for months. But the whole time, I also knew I had to be the one to unlock my heart. I alone have the key. At first I wondered, why am I left here? Despite my grief, I had no choice but to listen to what my heart and God were telling me. So I began allowing the messages that I was hearing from Spirit to guide me. Goodbye meets hello. Just after I read the book, I got another message in an email from Janet Atwood, the Passion Test Session Leader. It said, are you a messenger? How about that, I thought. The word messenger just keeps coming back to me. The next morning I woke up and said out loud, yes, I am a messenger. And then the poem started coming. I have never written a poem in my life before, but I started waking up in the middle of the night or just before dawn and writing down my thoughts. The poems came to me so clearly like messages I'd go back to sleep, wake up at my usual time in the morning, look at what I wrote a few hours before and marveled, did this come from me? One such poem, which is perhaps my favorite, is titled, Goodbye Meets Hello. I will share this with you. I had you at hello and goodbye, and I want you to know that my heart wants to cry. As I wipe each teardrop away, I just want to say, I love you. There is no pain like this that I thought even exist, especially when you are so missed. Please send the angels down to let me know that you're around. Every time I begin to pray, I send my love to you every day. I'm just waiting for the when I get to see you again. And it's great to know that our goodbye will be another hello. I didn't know what I was doing writing poetry from my heart, just that it helped to heal my heart and soul. It was every night and every morning. I'd wake up and write what was on my mind. Before I knew it, I had three books completed, which are now a part of the Angelic Dreams Poetry from the Heart series. Three books in four months? Who knew? Of course Spirit knew. God knew. But me? I had no idea. All I had to do was ask for guidance and be prepared to receive the answers and guidance. I am left with unconditional love. Poems come to me so completely and strong I have to pull over to write them down when I am driving. These messages are about love, compassion, growth, living in a moment, come anytime. At church on Sundays, I sometimes walk out with two new poems in my iPhone. Ed is my guide. 
I don't feel like he's gone. How can you be in love with someone for 42 years, 3.6 million hours, and think it's all gone? I knew. Walking past Ed's house when I was 13, God gave us that message back then. And the message, as in the love Ed and I share, is as strong today as it ever was. He gave us four beautiful children and eight awesome grandchildren, and they take care of me now. Ed didn't leave me alone. He left me with unconditional love. There are some poems that Ed writes to me, through me, through spirit. I don't even get to choose the titles of half of these poems. God gifted me a way to speak, a way to speak to you. Some part of me opened up to receive messages, messages for others, but also messages to heal my own heart and soul. And the message is always the same. Love is unconditional, for it is eternal. God has a path for us. I've learned a lot since Ed's passing about why we're here on this earth. It's to serve. It's to love ourselves and others unconditionally. It's to share ourselves and our messages with the world without limits. Being a messenger of love means that I can serve by sharing wisdom from my heart. I'm so blessed. One of my poems includes the line, Walk, don't run, into your soul. When our passion and our purpose wake up, we know who we are. Everyone is a messenger of God. We're all angels. It's a matter of who chooses to listen to the messages coming through and who chooses to accept the role of a messenger. God has a path for all of us. Are we listening to the messages coming to us through spirit and trying to understand their meaning? Messages can come from anywhere. The radio, a 100-year-old, a two-year-old. It's not where they are coming from, but how well are we listening? The what is so important. The how and the why are not our job. If you know your passion and your purpose and are guided to it and live it, you are going to have a blissful life. All we have to do is ask and then bring our messages out to the world to help and heal and support others. We need each other. We need to let people know how much they're loved and cared for. The more messengers we have, the more peace we'll have on this earth. We're all in this together, but only you can share your unique message with the world. The Courage to Ask After losing my true love of 42 years, heaven and earth feel closer to me than ever. I have come to realize that we're here on this earth for a reason and for a word. The reason is to serve. To serve in our communities, our churches, and our organizations, and to serve one another. The word, love. I've learned in life that you have to get uncomfortable to grow. If we stay in our comfort zones, we're not going anywhere. I have certainly been uncomfortable this past year. But look what has come to me. I have strength from faith, family, friends, and courage. And I feel a huge gratitude every day. Embracing my purpose as a messenger of love. And I want more. I'm hungry for these messages. And I'm also hungry to share them. And so I leave you with the following question. What would you have the courage to ask for if you knew you absolutely would receive it? Well, go ahead and ask for it. Your dream is only waiting for you to speak up. Your heart, God, and spirit. Are you listening to what is being said to you? Now is the time to let yourself trust in goodness and infinite abundance. Let yourself fall in love with possibility. The whole universe will work to make your dreams come true. As long as you do too. My heart says thank you for listening to my story, A Messenger of Love. I am so blessed and grateful for my family and friends, and I thank Peter and Taylor Nelson for sharing their talents and support, and Sherry Dunn for putting us together at the right divine timing. Much love, Dixie Daly. 
as I leave you with this message from Angelic Dreams, Poetry from the Heart. The key is your key. I thought I had to buy a key and realized it was inside of me. Just open up the treasure chest filled with love. You'll see the key sent from up above. It will open your heart. Now you know where it starts. God has a treasure waiting for you. Now you ask, what do I do? Remember you hold the key to see what it will be. When you look how far, you will see it in the stars. Now all you have to do is bring it into you. The key is your key to your secret message waiting for you to open your heart and listen because that's all you've been missing.